friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you my morning routine. This is what I do every morning unless I have an early morning doctor's appointment or something prevents me. This is what I do every single morning. First, I go to the coffee pot and I get my cup of coffee in hand. Then second, I go to my office and I sit down with my Bible. And that's when I do my early morning devotions. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit um, about what I do. Um, you know, the Word of God corrects us, it comforts us, it gives us guidance. It is my compass for life. When I don't know what to do, when I need guidance, I go to the Word of God. When I am on the mountaintop, when everything is going right, I go to the Word of God because I know I can't get complacent in my spiritual walk um, because the minute I say, you know what, God, I've got this, <laughs> then I really don't. I really don't. So um, it is my place to go to for peace, for joy. Um, this smile that I wear, it is genuine and it comes from God. Only God can give true and lasting joy and peace. And so that's just what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I wanted to start with the scripture in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. I love this passage. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached, reached perfection. And here in this passage, it just perfection means maturity. Um, but I press on to possess that perfection or maturity for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, and I love this part. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Yes. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. That is definitely true. Um, and then Romans chapter 10, verses 17. I just wanted to read that really quickly. It says, so faith comes from hearing. And that is hearing the good news about Christ Jesus. So if you wonder how can you build your faith, it is through reading the word of God. Absolutely. When I feel like my faith is uh, failing or my faith is being tested and tried, uh, I definitely go back to the word because God's character is revealed to us through his word. In fact, in Psalms, I just wanted to read this passage. I love Psalms 103. It is one of my all time favorite. I have so many, <laughs> so many favorite passages. But it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. Yes. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. And I love that because that passage just tells us so much about God. So if you want to know God, if you want to know his character, read his word it's here it's revealed through the scriptures and uh, you know some people say well I want to read the Bible but I don't understand it I would encourage you to read a commentary and uh, and also pray I always pray before I read the Bible in the morning and pray that the Lord would just reveal his word to me reveal what he would like to speak to me that day because the word of God is alive it is the only living book and it's amazing how God can speak to us through his word in new ways every time we read it even if we've read that passage a million times um, God always meets us where we are and that's what I love about him but I wanted to share a couple other scriptures uh, with you 
Romans um, chapter 10, verse 9. It says, <clears throat> If you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. And I love the book of Romans so much. Uh, the whole book, I encourage you to read it. But the theme is this, is that none of us are righteous in and of ourselves. And that is why we need Jesus. The Bible says that our righteousness, anything good about us is as filthy rags. And that is so true. Um, and that is why we need God. <laughs> so our righteousness, our being put in right standing with God comes through Jesus Christ. And how do we have that relationship? It's through his word and prayer. And so I make that a top priority every day in my life because I know without God, I am nothing. Without God, I fail. And without him, I am weak. But with him, I can do everything that he's called me to do. So, um, I have just a few more scriptures that I really want to share with you because they mean so much to me. Um, and one is Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 through 8. Uh, so much richness here in Philippians, so much. It says, always be full of joy in the Lord. The wind is almost blowing my papers away. <laughs> Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Yes. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Yes. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Then the God of peace will be with you. So fix your mind, fix your eyes on Jesus and on his word, and then you will have peace. Amen. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. I love that. One of my favorite uh, parables in all of the Bible is the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. Um, and I've mentioned it here before, but it is my favorite. Um, it is the parable about this widow who would not go away. She kept uh, bothering, knocking on the unjust judge's uh, door late at night, all the time, knocking, knocking, knocking. And he said, finally, I will give this woman what she wants because she, just to make her go away. And he is an unjust judge. So it is a contrast of our loving heavenly, heavenly father who is not unjust. The Bible throughout scripture says that he is just, he is merciful, he keeps accurate balances. So he is in contrast to this unjust judge. So if this unjust judge grants this poor widow's request, how much more? You know, that just reminds me um, of this passage that says that God um, takes care of the birds of the, fee the fields, you know, and how much more does your heavenly father care for you than the birds? And that is so true. So. I love the scriptures because we learn so much about the character of God and we learn that he is loving and he is good and he's merciful and he is kind. Um, but let's, let's go on and read the rest of this passage. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will to those who belong in Christ Jesus. Amen. So always be joyful, never stop praying, never give up. And then um, the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 40, I just wanted to share this. 
and I have it marked here in my Bible. I, I didn't mark that one, but here we go. <laughs> All right, so I love this passage. Uh, it says, haven't you heard, verse 21, haven't you heard, don't you understand, are you deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. The people seem below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root when he blows on them and they wither. The wind carries them off like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Ask the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after the other, calling them each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O oh, Jacob, how long? How can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O oh, Israel, how can you say the Lord, the God ignores your rights. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. How many times I have relied on this passage. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord, I love this part, will find new strength. I love that. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. I love that passage. So much richness there. So I have my morning coffee in hand my bible there and i pray and i pray and ask god that he would just speak to me like i said and i also have a prayer list that i pray over uh family and friends um and then i also journal i journal any uh special um scriptures that might have spoken to me that day or uh, maybe some prayer requests uh, that really helps me to stay focused too so also, I wanted to mention in closing that um, the Bible Gateway app is an awesome tool to get the Word of God in you. I've mentioned this before. Last year, my goal was to read through the Bible. Um, I started my goal late in the year, but I did wind up listening to the Bible and reading all the way through in like three and a half months, you guys. That was amazing. I was so good and I really was blessed. Um, I, I was so glad and I was so blessed that I actually attained my goal for the year. Now this year I don't have plans to read through the Bible in three and a half months, but if I make it through um, in one year, I will be very happy. So that is my goal. And so what I will do is I listen to the audio, um, my Bible Gateway audio uh, app, and then I, I listen with when I'm in the car or when I'm cooking or getting ready in the morning. It is just a wonderful way just to get, you know, just a few minutes of the Word of God in you at a time. Sometimes we think we have all these big goals and we reason that we don't have time to do it. But the truth is, is that we all have the same amount of time. It's how we choose to use it. So um, the Word of God and my spiritual walk and my faith is very important to me. It is number one because you know what the truth is, is that we are just passing through in this world. If this is all temporary. So I try to focus on things in light of eternity and uh, my hope is anchored in Christ alone. So I just wanted to share with you my morning routine. I hope maybe it will inspire you. Comment below, I'd love to hear from you and I will see you soon, God bless.